Do you believe in magic? What if I told you that real magic exists? It is hiding in plain sight, intricately woven into the surreal atmosphere of a webtoon called... Uh... Anasura Manara? Anasuma... Banana? Anasuma Nana. Anara Sumanara. Yeah, that one! Every now and again, I have the pleasure of experiencing a webtoon that simply blows me away, forcing me to rethink my own philosophy on life and creating an experience which makes me feel something truly profound. In this case, that webtoon is Anarasu Manara by Il Kwan Ha, which is a webtoon criminally lacking in content for how great it is, and you should be reading it. Let me tell you why. Well, first off, there's this really hot magician who looks suspiciously similar to George from Paradise Kiss, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. What does it mean to grow up? Is there a right or wrong way to become an adult in society, and if so, where does that leave those who stray from the path they are expected to follow? Anarasu manara, a Korean word meaning something akin to the English abracadabra, explores these questions and many more through the eyes of three crucial characters, Yoon Ai, Il Jung, and a mysterious magician who refers to himself only as L. The story takes place in the span of just 27 chapters, and although this may seem short, I promise you the experience is no less profound. Intricately woven together by threads of philosophical richness and whimsical wonder, Anarasu Manara truly is the very essence of magic. The story is told primarily from the perspective of Yoon Ai, a top student at her high school who is struggling to provide for herself and her sister in the absence of both parents, dedicating all of her time to studying and part-time jobs in the hope that she can become a respectable adult as quickly as possible and no longer have to exist in the throes of what she herself refers to as the curse of poverty. The webtoon is colored in striking black and white tones, which transport you into Ai's world, emphasizing the bleakness of her day-to-day -day life. You feel the heaviness of the atmosphere seeping into your bones. You hear undertones of static crackling in your ears, and you see the grim realities of a life marred by constant hardship. But what truly makes Anarasu Manara's artwork so breathtakingly beautiful is its use of color. Every so often we are shown these vibrant splashes of color, unique scenes which incorporate magazine-style cutouts into the panels to place emphasis on certain themes. For example, Ai's fixation on money as she tries desperately to stay afloat, or the elite world of her classmate, Il Deung, who lives in a house composed of various cutout images meant to represent the materialism of the wealthy. Despite the stark contrast in style, however, these realistic images function incredibly well in the sense that they stress the importance of various elements within the story. For instance, Il Kwan Ha could have simply drawn a $10 bill and colored it in for emphasis, or drawn a mansion to portray the materialistic greed of Il Jung's family, but there is something so striking and effective about these contrasting styles that really enhances the work as a whole and functions to further clarify the more subtle messages the author is trying to get across. Not only that, but it genuinely adds a very aesthetic quality to the art and makes this webtoon feel that much more unique. The story begins by telling us about a magician who lives at an abandoned amusement park and supposedly performs real magic. Before long, while chasing after a $10 bill, I finds herself standing in the middle of this very amusement park where she comes face to face with the mysterious magician who asks her if she believes in magic. 
Ai silently thinks to herself that she does not believe in magic before running away, thinking the magician to be pathetic and foolish for doing something so childish as an adult. This experience, however, does seem to reawaken something within her, as she muses about how she herself wanted to be a magician when she was a little girl, and through a series of various encounters with the magician, Ai slowly begins to reopen her heart to the idea of magic, and before long, begins taking lessons from this mysterious magician, and this is where the beauty in this webtoon really begins to shine through. We learn that the magician refers to himself as L, and as I continue spending time with him, we see her slowly start to believe in magic. But it is not just any magic. It is the philosophy of magic. Throughout the story, we are made to continuously question whether or not Elle's magic truly is real, or if it is just tricks and gimmicks, which is a question that is ultimately left up to the reader to answer, but personally, I don't think this question needs a definitive answer because even if Elle's magic is just a series of tricks and illusions, he is still performing real magic. Real magic is not some innate ability to make objects disappear and reappear. Real magic is a feeling. A feeling that inspires others, that sparks something in them, that gives them a sense of wonderment and joy. To experience the feeling of magic is what makes magic so magical, and being able to create that feeling of hope and excitement in another person, to me, is real magic. It is the feelings Elle creates in people like I that make him a real magician, not his ability to make money appear or to conjure up snow inside the tents or to force Il Quan Ha to draw the majority of this breathtaking panel in pink. The way magic is presented in the story, it is as if magic is a feeling, an experience, a philosophical way of looking at life. Even flowers painted on the floor of an empty tent can create the experience of magic, and that is what makes it real. It doesn't matter that the flowers aren't actual flowers, or that they weren't poofed into existence using some sort of spell or wave of a wand. What matters is that they created a feeling which allowed another person to experience the magic in the world, inspiring the inner creativity of the heart, and that is what is truly magical. Another theme explored in the story is the philosophy of growing up, and this is a concept that is explored quite eloquently both through I herself as well as her deskmate Il Jung, whose entire life has consisted of walking down a metaphorical asphalt road paved by the expectations of society and his parents. So long as he follows the path laid before him, he is all but guaranteed to succeed, and because this road is all he has ever Ever known, he doesn't even seem to fully comprehend how trapped he truly feels until L points it out to him. And for me, this is one of the most poignant metaphors in the story because not only does it resonate with me, but I suspect it resonates with many of you as well. The asphalt road essentially represents expectation. It is the path we are expected to follow in order to become proper adults, and it is not easy to get off of this road because it has already been paved. It already exists right in front of us, which eliminates any potential uncertainty. We know that the road is just a straight line. So long as we simply keep walking forward, we will always have something to maintain our footing, and we get so used to walking on this road that we almost become oblivious to it. Walking down the road becomes second nature. It is the only thing we know and the most certain thing in our lives. So we continue aimlessly walking without considering why we're walking down the road, where the road leads, and if we even want to be walking down the road in the first place. Place. Walking down the road feels comfortable to us, but the road is cold and never-ending. 
there is no final destination because expectation never ceases, even if we do manage to succeed in becoming a respectable adult. But getting off the road is what is truly difficult because it is an unknown. Getting off means we lose the comforts and familiar presence of that road and plunge into a less structured realm of existence. But this is exactly what makes getting off the road so wonderful. By straying from the path before us, we are giving ourselves an opportunity to reach a greater degree of self-discovery. Thematically, Anarasi Manara ticks every box I wanted it to, but even more than its phenomenal presentation of philosophical concepts, what I truly love about this story is the fact that it made me feel something. Yoon Ai is so incredibly human. Although she doesn't have a standout personality or a strikingly commanding presence, there is a distinct beauty in the simplicity of her character, and her motivation for wanting to be an adult and rejecting the childishness of magic while simultaneously yearning to believe in it is another element of the series that I can relate to. So often we find ourselves desperate to grow up, yet longing for that childhood magic we once held so dear, but the very notion of magic can feel foolish in a world which often leaves us with a bleak and hopeless outlook, but that is exactly what is so profound about this story. It truly makes you believe in possibility and in living a life that makes you genuinely happy, and honestly, that's all I really want in a story to feel something. I want the stories I read to give me an emotional response, and Anarasu Manara delivered that in spades. Throughout the series, I found myself tearing up, wondering if I too am chasing after something I don't actually want for the sake of fulfilling societal expectation, going to school to get a degree to do something I don't truly care about beyond the money I'm hoping it will deliver. But after reading this story, I feel like I can see my own life a little more clearly. The story ultimately ends with an invitation to the reader, inviting you to believe in magic. That being said, there is a lot more to this webtoon than what I have mentioned, but I won't go into any further detail beyond what I've already said, as I do not want to spoil this amazing series for any of those who choose to read it after watching this video, which I hope is all of you because I genuinely think this webtoon is a hidden gem. Whether you feel stuck in life right now, or you are simply looking for a genuinely great story, I sincerely hope you will give Anarasu Manara a read because it really is that great. If you do read it, I'd love it if you would come back and let me know your thoughts. It would be purely magical if you could please like the video and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.